The full moon was setting behind Teton Canyon last week as my friend Chris and I drove up to the park to ski Static Peak. In the early season, you never know if access to the summer trailhead will be granted or denied. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Today, we are denied. Luckily, there's enough snow on the road to allow for skinny as we look high above to our goal, Static Peak. Skinning among the cattails down low. After debating about our approach route, in the end, we opted to go up Wimpy's Knob and through the sagebrush on the lower faces. Getting ready to descend into Static Draw, we spy the east face of Static Peak. Chris negotiates some firm, windblown terrain while succumbing to Telly Miletus. As I drop in, the snow is extremely firm, but I'm able to find some chalkier snow on the left side of the shot, managing some fun turns on a nice fin above some rocks. Before traversing left to put our skins back on for the final ascent to the summit of static. Regrouping with Chris, here I go from Big Shadow Man to Little Shadow Man back to Big Shadow Man. A closer view of Static Peak, Chris making a high contour to our approach route behind Albright Peak. Back on the skins, we found some good soft snow and hoped to be able to skin to the summit. As we approached the ridge, however, the snow got extremely crusty and we were forced to boot. Chris boots the ridge above Death Canyon in front of Rimrock Lake and the rocky north face of Prospector Mountain. I've been admiring the east face of this peak for years. This year, I vow to ski it. Travel is easy and quick on the windblown rocky ridge and Buck Mountain finally offers us views of its south face. Battling high winds, Chris makes his way up the final few feet to the summit, which drops off steeply on its north side. And from this perspective, the southeast couloir of Buck Mountain looking extremely radical. And the Grand Teton offering its south face up for viewing as well. Finally, we're ready to ski, and while Chris isn't looking, I sneak in front to grab first tracks. The route down the ridge towards the east face is extremely rocky and we take our time sidestepping and side slipping, but manage to eke out a few turns on a wind lip next to the abyss. Chris taking it slow but managed to make a few telly turns over the thinly covered rocks. Finally, we find ourselves standing above the east face, which from this perspective looks quite good. Looks good. Yeah. And now, it's time to sample the goods. Taxi! Which in fact, by our prediction, are quite splendid. Though I'm tempted to open it up and let them rip, the early season conditions cause me to make lots of turns and keep the speed in check. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Here comes Chris. Caution! Oh! And down goes Chris. <laughs> Telly. We continue to find good snow as we make our way down the face. Chris gets his redemption with telly turns in good snow. Lower down, the terrain is broken, so I pull over to assess the route. Chris joins me and we talk things over. I think it goes with some side slipping here maybe. And after lining things up, we'll make slow turns through a nice rocky chute. Crusty.
Further down, I find another fin feature to play on before exiting out into a wide open bowl. I really wanted to open it up here, but due to early season conditions and hearing of a friend who recently broke his leg on Glory Bowl, I kept it in check. And I glance back up at the run at the bottom to admire my signature. Chris leaving his own John Hancock and finishing in front of the Grand Teton. Found great snow in the trees further down as we exited Static Draw. The snowpack got thinner as we made our way down to the valley and we picked our way down gullies and headwalls. finishing the runoff with a fair bit of meadow skipping for admiring our tracks from the valley bottom. Thanks for watching. Live to ski.